In April 2009, the world was sent into panic by a mysterious agent. One with the power to kill. These are real people, real lives being lost. A disease was sweeping through populations, caused by an organism invisible to all but the most powerful instruments. A virus. The World Health Organization says swine flu has now spread to nearly every country in the world. For all our scientific advances, we still have a lot to learn. We have no idea, basically, how viruses make a living, other than the fact they have to infect something and replicate. Why do viruses exist? We don't really know the answer to that question. We don't even know how many there are. There could be thousands of other viruses out there, and we have no idea what they are, how they spread, what populations. And because we struggle to understand them, they cause mass terror. People must not panic. But the carnage that was expected hasn't yet materialized. England's Chief Medical Officer, Sir Liam Donaldson, says the swine flu pandemic is considerably less lethal than had been feared. Once more, we appear to have got the calculations wrong. So when and why do viruses kill? Here in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, teams of people are continually scanning the world for telltale signs. Picking up clues from thousands of different sources, they're on the lookout for emerging diseases. In April 2009, the alarm bells began to ring. It happened on a Friday night, so I was, I think I happened to be on call then, so I saw the email traffic and it was, at that point, it was routine. Two children in San Diego, California, had come down with a new variant of flu. The new wasn't that big a deal because there were only two cases and the kids had already recovered. The emergence of a new flu virus